Today we're looking at Autodesk or ADSK stock, a leader in the 3D design and engineering software market. In order to understand what drives their business, you should understand their various different products. Over 40% of their revenue comes from the architecture, engineering, and construction market, whereas the next largest component, around 30% of their business, comes from AutoCAD product family, which is computer-aided design. This is for, for professional design, drafting, detailing, and visualization. A lot of this, to understand you know, what, what we're effectively talking about is this is visualizing something in advance. Someone's designing it. Someone has an idea and sort of saying, well, what would it take? What are the materials that it would take? What would it look like? Is this actually theoretically possible to build a structure in this sort of way. And it could be, it, it doesn't just have to be, let's say civil engineering or building a new commercial building. It could be, Hey, this new manufacturing plant, what do we want this to look like? Or this product or this car, what do we want these very real objects to look like? But first we want to visualize them and to say, Hey, how are we going to build this? So then their next largest component is manufacturing. And then you have media and entertainment, the smallest component. You can see it's mostly large firms, large and medium. That's over 80% of their business, then you do have smaller, you know, customers, you know, when you think about this business, it's several thousand dollars per subscription. And you can see it's a global business, uh, you know, ge with revenue ge geography all around the world. You know, America is only around 40% Asia pack another 20%. And so then understanding sort of their value proposition, what they're doing, once again, it's enabling the design. So visualizing what you want to build, then planning it out. What's the time frame in which you're going to build? At what point are you going to build, let's say, the foundation? Then you're going to layer in certain products. How much are these products going to cost? Who's going to come in and build these products? And then the actual building and sort of cross-checking it against the plan. Well, is this you know, what we expected? Are we running over budget? Why? To sort of understand these components. And more recently, they've launched their cloud collaboration offerings. So that way, it's 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 actually more accessible to say, hey, this is what the builders expected. This is, let's say, the specialist uh, contractor or the subcontractors working on. So, hey, they can work with the general contractor. They can work with the owner of the product project. And you can see everything in one place, one document does make it easier to say, hey, is this project coming along and better communicate with everyone to sort of say, hey, we're all looking at the same data. And Autodesk isn't just sort of a general app, you know, for creating these, these, you know, computer assisted design. They've also acquired these niche assets like Innovise, which provides comprehensive water modeling solutions for challenges involving, let's say, flood risks, maintenance of water infrastructure, sewer overflow. So these are like critical tools for civil engineering. And this is just one example of what Autodesk has done, acquiring a very niche asset that I'd argue is indispensable for the folks that use it. So then that does raise the question, well, is un is, is Autodesk unrivaled? And that's the basis of this channel. You know, wherever I'm going, I'm going to the beach. I'm thinking, you know, are these types of things unrivaled? I want to understand. And so when we look at it, you know, clearly it has an attractive business model as nearly 100% of their revenue is recurring in nature and their quarter, their each quarter they update their net revenue retention rate range from around 100 to 110%. So that does suggest they have a strong value proposition. Effectively, their customer base, without adding any new customers, it would grow by about 10%. You know, effectively new add-ons increasing your pricing or folks, you know, effectively using more of the software. And their switch from, let's say, a license based model to a subscription based model has made them more resilient and they they're quick to call out how yeah during the global financial crisis you saw their revenue decline significantly whereas now when you when you know sort of faced with the confrontation of covid their business actually continued to do very well was much more stable now i'm curious you know if if we have a pronounced downturn in the future if they're resiliency will be as strong as let's say they saw during COVID because I don't think you saw as dramatic of a construction slowdown and clearly construction is a key component of you know of their business so I'm, I'm curious how that plays out in future downturns once again that question about are you unrivaled so clearly Autodesk is a great business they're one of the largest and fastest growing CAD software companies but it does have very real competition and management's quick to call out several of the different players one example is Dassault Systems, and this is a French company. It's a little bit bigger, better profit margins, but a little bit slower growth. 
And so I'd argue, okay, so here's an example of real competition. And it's not like they're declining in revenue or they're only growing by, you know, 1%. They're showing, you know, around 19% growth, you know, in the most recent quarter, or closer to 11% when you adjust for constant currency. So they're benefiting from uh, effectively having a weaker euro. But it is worthwhile calling out this is a real competitor. You know, this is a real player in the marketplace. There are also smaller niche, pro, you know, players that are growing much faster than Autodesk. Uh, you know, Bentley's targeting more of a construction element. Procure has a slightly different business model that's very intriguing. So this set suggests to me that Autodesk has a very strong value proposition, but not necessarily unrivaled because there clearly are a lot of players. This might just be an industry where a lot of players win over time and we'll see how that plays out it's not necessarily one player wins it all looking at autodesk stock down between 30 40 percent this past year the question is where does it go from here clearly an exceptional company well if you're looking to take charge of your investment journey consider unrivaledinvesting.com for compelling investment ideas real-time portfolio updates and our exclusive discord server available for annual subscribers in full disclosure this is not financial advice and so looking at what management has penciled out for Autodesk, you know, this is previously at, you know, where they were saying, hey, by fiscal 23, you know, they were expecting high teens annualized growth, 16 to 18% annualized growth from 2020 to 2023. They're talking about 2.4 billion in free cash flow. Remember that 2.4 billion free cash flow figure, because I'm going to come back to that in a second. And they're talking about non-GAAP operating margins of 38%. Keep in mind, their, their actual operating margins, and this is one of the reasons why I mentioned that Dassault has much better profitability figures than them, is that their, their non-GAAP operating margins around 38%, that includes a lot of stock-based compensation. Their GAAP operating margins are actually around 20% or less, whereas you look at some of their European counterparts and you just don't see that type of stock-based compensation. You do see significant amortization expense. So looking at this, you know, looking at their, their margins, you know, it is worthwhile to understand, okay, this is what they were previously guiding to. 16 to 18% annualized growth, 2.4 billion in free cash flow. And now they've sort of pulled it back significantly, you know, saying, yeah, we're for fiscal 23, we're not going to hit that revenue figure. Maybe we're only going to talk about, you know, mid teens growth and our free cash flow might be only around $2 billion. And now part of this is it's weaker because of a stronger US dollar. This is a business reporting in dollars. So if the US dollar rallies significantly, all their non US business is going to effectively come in less or become less valued when you report in US dollars. And so that that is a very real impact. They also removed their Russian operations or stopped their Russian operations. So that also hurts the results. But long term management still does believe in the double digit growth potential in terms of free cash flow on a compounded, compounded basis for Autodesk, you know, looking at this business. So the question is, well, What's $2 billion worth in terms of annual free cash flow? And that's what management's targeting. Once again, when you're looking at this, that, that $2 billion in free cash flow, you need to understand, well, what have they done historically? And you see in the last few years, it's really been closer to one five, one four, you know, billion in annual free cash flow. A lot of that between 25 and 30% of that historic free cash flow was from the fact that they were paying their employees in stock. So, you know, based on the current share price, you know, that does affect, you know, around half percent, one percent annual dilution, which is real dilution. And I don't like to see that management. This really bothers me when I see annual share repurchases and then it really ramps up into 2022, arguably when the stock price you know, was quite high or 2021 when the stock price was quite high. So I'm, I'm seeing this and I'm saying, yeah, I, I don't like seeing that management. And then when you check that they did their share prices at much share repurchases at much higher prices, not what I like to see. It makes me think that management isn't actually deeply, you know, aware of capital allocation. It's just sort of saying, hey, this is just one of our tools. We're going to use it regardless of price. So I, I think management should get dinged for seeing their capital allocation in the past, buying stock at much, much higher prices. And their target of $2 billion in free cash flow, I'm not even sure if they're even going to hit it this year because, you know, they're effectively at for during the first half of this year, around 700 million in operating cash flows, you know, adjusting for capital expenditures, you know, around 700 million, you know, last year is around 500 million, you know, yeah, they ended around 1.5 billion for the year. So, you know, throw on, let's say another billion, you know, in the second half. So it's clearly skewed to the second half. That still doesn't really get you to that $2 billion threshold. So it wouldn't surprise me if you actually come under that despite management, you know, revising it lower once already. 
And so thinking about this business, there's a couple of different ways to cut it. You know, one way you could do it is you could use their gap operating profitability. Another way is to look at, you know, think about, well, what's the actual cash flows that this business is generating, even if you're focusing on, on a sort of diluted basis. And so here it is, I'm, I'm taking a different perspective than I usually do thinking, okay, well, their cash flows clearly are, you know, significant around, one, let's say one and a half billion that I'm penciling out just to be more realistic because that $2 billion seems like it's going to be tough to hit and, you know, slap on, you know, try, trying to think what, what's going to be the right growth rate in the years ahead. You know, currently they're talking about mid teens. They're talking about long-term, you know, double digit growth rate. So I'm saying nine to 13%. That does reflect sort of the diluted impact. And I'm saying over the next five years. So you start with a business, well, let's say it's generating really closer to one and a half billion in free cash flow. Growing it at, let's say, 9 to 13 percent over time um, over the next five years. And then let's say five years from now, this is gets a multiple of, let's say, 20 to 25 times. And the data, once again, would suggest that they're not you know coming under significant competitive pressure. Their, biz their value proposition is very much holding up. They're one of the largest players growing at one of the fastest clips. So this does suggest like, hey, you you probably do won't have to worry that much about valuation compression unless you're in an environment where potentially interest rates move a lot higher, unless there's some sort of risk off environment, which which could very well be possible. But I'm trying to say, OK, is 20 times is 25 times you know, reasonable trying to throw a range of possibilities and looking at this, I'm effectively saying over the next five years, you're effectively saying break even for their business, you know, for for what shareholders could get to maybe, you know, around 100 percent upside. I do personally think that this risk reward potential is better than, let's say, the S&P 500 personally. And I do think this is arguably a better business than the aggregate of the S&P 500 because you have, you know, effectively this huge market that you're tapping into one of the top players. They're growing at a good clip, you know, significant free cash flow that hopefully they'll be able to continue to deploy if the share price were to fall significantly. So I look at this and I say this is very interesting, very compelling, very strong value proposition. I personally would be interested in buying, but I personally want to see more of an asymmetric skew where I'm saying, hey, even in a lower scenario, I can still pencil out maybe 100% upside. And in my really high scenario, you know, I could pencil out 300% upside or 500% upside. And so I'm not right really seeing that right now with Autodesk. So, you know, a lot of folks have asked me like, you know, what, what are the types of setups that you're looking for? I'm looking for the things that, really are compelling, especially in this risk environment where I'm seeing broad monetary tightening. I want to get I in, in short, I want to get compensated for the risk of deploying capital right now, because I think it is a much tougher environment than a lot of folks are really cognizant of. You know, when you see folks like Stanley Druckenmiller say over his, you know, 40 year investment career, this is the toughest market that he's been in and wouldn't be surprised to see the stock market effectively flat for the next decade. That is a tougher risk environment. You know, so I think it's appropriate to have your you know, risk preferences and how you want to invest tied to those types of realities. So I look at this and I'm saying, not quite super compelling yet. I'd want a lower price. If you have a different opinion about Autodesk, I'd absolutely love to hear it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video on ADSK stock, please make a point of hitting that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and thank you so much for watching Unrivaled Investing.